So this is a case study in how to troubleshoot or investigate a dripping cup of coffee. So if you've ever been to Starbucks or another coffee house, occasionally the coffee cup drips. And if you look in this picture right here, uh, there is a seam on the cup. It's right here. And then the lid has a hole that you drink from. And if the drink hole lines up with the seam, it creates this gap and the coffee cup can leak. So it can drip on your shirt or it can drip on your desk and it's kind of annoying. This is a simple example of how to troubleshoot a very basic issue uh, like this. So we're going we're gonna to step through it um, and show you how to conduct a thorough root cause analysis. We're going to go through some more complex issues later, but this is just a coffee cup. So we laid this out as a simple cause and effect relationship. On the left, it says cup dripped. Uh, that's an effect. And then when you ask, why did the cup drip? It's because, and people would obviously say, well, the, the lid's leaking. So I've got this lid on and it, it drips. This is a a 1Y as a way to think of it. We call it a 1Y cause map is how we have it labeled. If you step through this, uh, you can add more detail. So it's just simple cause and effect relationship, effect on left, cause on right. If we expand it a little bit and said, well, really the issue is the customer is not very happy. So there's an impact to the customer goal and that's because the coffee cup dripped. So that's a cause and effect relationship. And the coffee cup dripped because there's a leak path on the rim of the cup. That's that 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 gap that's created uh, that produces that leak path. So there's three cause and effect relationships. You can see this is an effect and this is a cause and then this is an effect of this cause and this is an effect of this cause. So the leak path on the rim is a cause of the drip. It's also an effect of the gap. So it's pretty simple. That's a, a 3Y. This is a, a 5Y. So 5Y is a well-known problem solving tool. It's part of uh, Toyota's uh, production system. 5Ys um, is great because it comes right after four and just before six, but that's about it. It just shows there are five cause and effect relationships here. So we call this a 5Y cause map, same convention as the 1Y, the 3Y, the 5Y. And you can see how easy it is for someone to say, well, the reason that the cup leaks is because there's that folded seam that you saw in the, in the picture right on the rim. And that's because how the cup was designed. So really this whole issue is because of cup design. You can see how simple it is for somebody to make that point that cup design is the point. Maybe this person was in the original cup evaluation and said, I tried to tell you it was cup design. There is just more, more to this though. So if we, if we talk with someone else, they might go, well, really the reason it drips um, is because the opening on the lid is aligned with the seam in the cup. That's another cause and effect relationship. So here it says coffee cup drip because of the leak path. And this says, well, really it dripped because the opening is aligned with the seam on the cup. And that is because the barista installed it that way. And they installed it that way because it just wasn't covered in their training. So again, this is an effect and this is a cause and this is an effect and this is a cause and this is an effect. You kind of get the idea. It's pretty simple. Uh, cause and effect relationships. But this is a 5Y that somebody made and this is a 4Y that somebody else made. This is one of the reasons people criticize five whys as a method is they say, well, you can have two different people build two different five whys and it's not repeatable. And so there's an issue, like, but it's not supposed to be repeatable. This cause and effect relationship is absolutely accurate. And this set of cause and effect relationships is absolutely accurate. They're just different explanations of why it happened. There's not a single cause of issue. You have to dissect the issue and understand as a system, that's what you need to be doing in your company also. If we even added another one, scooted these up a little bit and said, um, really someone else could go, you know, the issue is, you know, a customer, anybody that buys a cup of coffee should know this. The reason the cup dripped is because the opening obviously aligns with the seam. That's because the customer didn't check it. Even if the cup is designed this way, and even if the barista messes up in the training, some people just know, yeah, I check this every time and I make sure that I put that opening in the lid 180 degrees from the seam and then it never leaks. So you can see when you ask the simple question, why does the cup drip? Depending on who you talk to, you'll get different explanations. Is this a design issue? Is this a training issue? Is this a user issue? Does this sound like uh, maybe miscommunications you have in your company on explaining what happened? So there's three different points of view of what happened on this issue. But if you see, if we expand this a little bit and say, well, the coffee cup dripped in that, that 4Y and really it dripped because the cup was tipped 
towards the seam side. That's really why it drips, because it tips that way, because that's where the opening in the lid is. And you can even expand that a little bit farther and say, well, really, it's because the coffee collects there. The reason the coffee cup drips is because the coffee collects at that leak path. These are just smaller cause and effect relationships. The coffee cup, the coffee collects at the leak path because the cup is tipped toward the seam because that's where the opening is. So we just added some detail in between here. It used to just say this, and these weren't in here, but you add detail. The word analysis means to break down into parts. So what was a 4Y turns into, in this case, a 6Y, and it's just more specific. I should break out an issue. This is what would be called critical thinking, being able to dissect an issue thoroughly. You can even take this 5Y and expand it and say, well, really, the coffee cup drips. Uh, that's because the coffee collects at the leak path, that little gap there, because there's a leak path on the rim and the cup is tipped that direction. So really though, that, that, those first two cause and effect relationships connect together and you could call this a 10Y. So if you look at this and say, well, the coffee cup drips because coffee collects in that very specific part of the cup. That's because there is a leak path on the rim and the cup is tipped that way. If that cup sits upright, like it sits on the counter, it is not going to leak. You can have the leak path there the entire time, but the cup isn't tipped, so there is no leak. It doesn't leak until you leave and you tip it towards yourself to drink and it soaks on the, the rim for a little while, ends up leaking. It takes this one and this one. You have to have the leak path on the cup and you gotta tip it toward you to have it leak. But we've got this other one that says, well, the customer didn't check it, so how do you, how do you tie these in? If I scoot this over, the reason the opening on the lid is aligned with the seam is because the customer didn't actually check it. So really, while three different 5Ys are built, it really builds into basically one 11Y. And when you look at this and ask, well, why is there the coffee cup actually dripping? Is it because of cup design? And that answer is yes, it is because of cup design. And the argument is if the cup design was better, if, there was an, if there's not a leaking seam or not a seam at all, then this would never happen. And that is absolutely true. That is absolutely true that if it wasn't for this cup design, this cup wouldn't leak. It's also true that if the barista's training would have been different and the barista would have just lined up the lid properly, even with that design of cup, if the barista just lines up the lid 180 degrees from the seam, it doesn't leak either. And also, if the customer, if the customer just lined this up, it still didn't happen. This is what organizations have to understand in analyzing an issue, is many groups think that there's one thing that caused the problem. And there is not one cause of an issue. That's the confusion about root cause analysis and troubleshooting is people think I gotta find the thing. You wanna find solutions, but to do that, you have to find everything that actually produced that issue. And that's exactly why you have to be able to dissect an incident. So you lay an incident out, which is called an analysis. You explain the cause and effect relationships. This even breaks out a little bit further because you could say it doesn't really happen until the customer actually tips the cup. So and let, if you drank out of a straw, instead of tipping the cup, which would be kind of hot, uh, you wouldn't have this issue either. So it's actually because of cup design, the barista training, the customer didn't align it, and then we tip the cup. Once you know that, and you know these different causes, it gives you options on solutions. There are different ways to solve this issue. So some people will be fixated that this is a design issue. It has to be changed from design. And that is an option. You could change the design of all the cups. That is one solution. Another solution is you could just train the baristas to rotate the lid 180 degrees and you could even put a little public service announcement at the condiment station and tell the customers, hey, even if the barista put the lid on correctly, when you go put the cream or sugar in the cup, uh, make sure you get the lid back on correctly and it won't drip. So uh, people see issues differently. It's part of the miscommunication that goes on. You can see how easy it is for people to go, well, I'll tell you what the problem is. The problem is that that small gap on the rim. And someone goes, no, the problem is the design of the cup. And someone says, no, the problem is the barista's training. And everybody wants to debate the problem. And there's just huge confusion. That's why incidents have to be tied to the goals. So this entire thing is built with our, our cause mapping template. If you want a copy of this particular incident, there's a PDF for the dripping cup of coffee that you can get in the description beneath this video. And the whole thing was built using our cause mapping template in Microsoft Excel.
So we have a lot of uh, case studies on our website. We do webinars, free webinars every week on our, you can find out about that list on our website too. And make sure you download the uh, the cause mapping template. You can experiment with how to build a 3Y, 5Y, 15Y, or 50Y. And we have much more uh, complex issues that we cover as case studies um, on our YouTube channel. So subscribe to that and you'll get a, a copy of those other videos. Thanks very much. Have a great day.